You heard about this thing, uh, M1 thing from Apple? Ooh, we got an M1 chip. Hmm. We're going to put it everywhere. Yeah, why not? You want a new computer? M1. Mm -hmm. You want a new tablet? M1. Mm -hmm. You want a new laptop? M1. Yeah. You want a new toilet? M1. Perfect. Solves all the problems. Got the fastest toilet around. Mm-hmm. Processing. What would it be processing? I don't know. Algorithms. Yeah. Uh, Mine's what, Bitcoin. What is the <laughs> what is the most efficient way to flush this toilet right now? Yeah. Yeah. The water droplets. That was the a right thing. Place. That was a thing, though. You yeah. go to CES. You go to these uh, events, mm -hmm. and they'd be like, "Here's a better fridge. It's got a processor." You know. I I I was doing a video. We had the Mercedes EQS in the studio. We did, yeah. It was a good time. I post a couple teaser pictures. Video's coming out soon. Don't miss it, please. This you will be it'll be a disservice to yourself. Cause this thing has so much I couldn't even scratch the surface, this thing. Yeah, it was very impressive. This video oh, comes out, you okay. watch the video. Yeah. But here are the screenshots. Go ahead, Will. I apologize. This is nice images here. Go ahead, Will. I would say mine is better. You want to check mine out? Here. What's yours? Oh. Yeah, this one. That's pretty cool. Well, was yours a teaser? Did you, you just gave the whole thing Look away. That. That's not a teaser at all. Look at that. You just showed That's a whole a car. That's a right there. You showed a whole car. <laughs> See, I'm trying to leave something for the video. No, no. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because everything... Like when I say scratch the surface, I mean inside the car. I mean inside the interface. Yeah, you the, get you went in the tech features and things, and it's so comprehensive. And that's actually why I'm bringing it up right now because you're like, okay, you start with M1, get to the point. What are you doing, Lou? Toilets. Toilets. What are you doing, Lou? But it's all. It all serves a purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I I realize that I take you on a ride. You come for this show, but I promise you, it will pay off. Mm -hmm. You just got to come for that ride. Yeah. I said, deal. We make. Yeah, we're all in here. I'll tell you, it's going to be a nice meal on the end of it. Mm. Not, I mean, you can't eat it, but like mental. Mm -hmm. Tidbits. Yeah. Tim bits. Tim bits are kind of like tidbits. Oh, Will's yeah. feeling stretched right now. He's like, God damn it, dude. Where are you going to? So anyway, the reason I brought it up is because the car, I saw somebody after I posted tweezers. They, uh, tw <laughs> oh, man. I combined Twitter and... And teaser. That's a new word. Yeah. It's a teaser on Twitter. It's called a tweezer. Okay. Well, that's, wow. That's something. Unbox therapy from now on. Every video gets a tweezer. Are you, sure you know, it's a bit, it's a bit terrifying the word though, because like no one likes tweezers. It sounds very surgical. I, I feel like I'm getting um, picked apart. What's it called when the aliens. They they probe. No no no. But before they probe, like what do they do? Dissect. But how do they get you in the first place? Uh, with the light. Yeah yeah. What is that? They abduct you. Abduct. Yeah. They abduct you, don't yeah. they? Yeah. When I think of tweezers, I think I'm getting abducted. Mm -hmm. Get your tweezers away from me. Yeah. Somebody replied to my teaser on Twitter, talking about. The actual processing power of the car. They were talking about the RAM, the number of cores, the GPU. I was like, whoa. It's a whole computer. That's where there. we're at now. Yeah. We're doing tech specs, and it's not necessarily zero to 60. Mm. It's on the inside of the car was, was running it. Yes. And as we continue to lean on the automated aspects, autonomous driving, and the heads-up display on this thing is bananas. As we continue to increase our reliance on the car as a computer, we start to look at the specs differently as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that gets me all the way back to the start. Because never mind the M1, which was getting so much love and attention. Let's talk about the M2, because that's what you do when you talk about Apple. It's old news to talk about the current generation. I don't care how good it is. Mm. You talk about the next one and the next one. And the next one. 
That's what they do with the iPhone. Well, let me tell you what. The M2 processor has reportedly already gone into production. This is the one you want, Will. Yeah, not that old M1. That's right. You're better than that. Yeah. It could arrive as early as July in time for the next-gen MacBooks. Oh, this is a way to get you to buy the Pro one. Mm. Oh, you want to do the 15- or 16-inch Pro? Mm. Well, it's an M2. If you're the real deal, guy like you, Will, oh, you like to use Final Cut Pro? M2. Yeah. Higher numbers are better. Yeah, what are you doing with that one? Yeah. We got a two. Lame. Here you go. Now you're starting to get it, Will. Uh-huh. The chipset will be produced by TSMC. Latest technology, five nanometer plus. Production of the chipsets will probably take at least three months. M2 will be a complete system on a chip. CPU, GPU, AI processors, all integrated. Could pop up in a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Hmm. Maybe they could do an iMac Pro. Or, oh, never mind, I got to do something with the Mac Pro. Even that might come later. Next MacBook Pro Pro models are rumored to be a 14 and a 16 inch, ready in Q2, Q3, 2021. It could be sooner than later. I don't know. Yeah. Could be sooner than later. Or as early as July. And then everybody who just got the M1 thing. They're like, hey, man. Stressing out. Yeah. Jeez, I got to, what do I got to do? Sell this? Get the dog. Because chances are M1 is doing fine for most people anyway, but. When it comes to the bragging rights, it's going to be all about the M2 if they decide to call it that. Mm. Today's sponsor, Me Undies, the only sponsor that's under my pants right now. I knew you were going to go there. I don't know where else to go with Me Undies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's where you get no choice. That's where you end up. These things are so soft. I put them on, uh, I move around, I do some stretching. You didn't know that. Do you? Sometimes. Oh. Didn't you hear me on a didn't you hear me on a phone over there? I got a I got a an ultrasound on my knee. I got a torn meniscus. Oh no. Yeah, old injury. I just move on with my day. Uh, I had it for a while. I'm like, all right, I don't know. Check it out. <laughs> just broken. I was like, all right, check it okay. out. And you know it's the type of situation where you talk to the technician yeah. with the ultrasound, and they're not really supposed to tell you. But you kind of want them to insinuate a little bit. Have you seen anything in there? Yeah, they give you the inside scoop if yeah, you, you ask nicely. Do you see anything in there? I mean, you don't have to say it, but just give me the quote because the doctor's supposed to interpret it. Yes. But, you know, I have a rapport with the technician. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to leave it there. All right. I'm going to leave it there. But anyway, turns out, all said and done, I got something torn over there. So you got to take care of your stuff, man. For sure. And that's what MeUndies does. It takes care of your stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about that stuff. Yes. Because you need the softest material, and that's what they give you. And I saw on the main page, they just did a collab with uh, Star, Star Wars. Wars. I didn't see that coming. Look at that. Look at these people. You don't look that good. Well, you got to put those on, and then all of a sudden you have a smile like that guy. Yeah. Baby Yoda. Oh, it's new Star Wars collab. Yep. The Child Returns for a Limited Time. They're having fun with Okay, it. new Star Wars. Summer is coming, and for so many of us, it's a season of discomfort. It's hot out. You sit around in your underwear. If you could, you would. MeUndies want to, wants to make this summer a summer of comfort. They want you to know that if you want to sit around in your underwear, that's absolutely allowed. Hmm. Get comfortable and express yourself this summer with undies and a classic and bold colors. And fun and adventurous prints. I guess the Star Wars one is part of that. I wear these. I love them. They're legitimately soft. They don't just say it's soft. You'll try them on. They will be soft. You will feel better. You will do more. And for you guys, as an offer right now. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. And MeUndies also has a problem-free philosophy. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, they'll refund or exchange it. Right on. No questions asked. To get your 15% off of your first order and free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash Lou Later. That's MeUndies.com slash Lou Later. I'll put a link in the description if that's easier for you. Use the slash Lou Later to get your 15% off and your free shipping. Don't miss it. It's time to get softer down there. Take care of yourself this summer. This could be you. Mm -hmm. You heard about this iOS 14.5. The apps are tracking you. Do you want them to track you? You're being tracked. They know anything about you. Uh, 
That's scary. I don't even have an iPhone. No, no, they, it's, don't, don't you worry. Automatically. Yeah, don't you worry. Yeah. Yeah, you're tracked. So this has been, been a lot of talk about this, this day coming. Facebook had a feeling about it. Mm-hmm. Tim had a feeling about it. And he was talking about it on the other side of it. And they said, look, we're going to give people the option. They want to be tracked or not tracked. We're not going to let you just do it. And then Mark comes out and he says, hey, man, build a business over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got um, trying to show people relevant ads. And I know everyone's sneering right now. They're cringing and saying relevant ads. Yeah, right. It is a real thing. It's no, a real no. thing. I would argue that they're pretty accurate. With and their it, ads. it's better than having the awkward moment when you were a child who used to watch TV, the commercial comes on, doesn't apply to you. Yeah. What are they talking about? Yeah. Hey, mom, what are they talking about? Yeah. Nobody wants that. So I don't know if everybody wants completely untargeted. I know you can do it, but. Sometimes, if any, look, I have bought a thing from an ad and it's a thing that I ended up wanting. Were you happy with the purchase? I don't know. I don't remember what it was. Oh. I'm sure I've done it. Sure. Yeah. We all have. And so there is a point to it. It's not completely pointless, but sure to have an option to decide how you want your, your apps to treat you or at least to let you know what they're doing. Okay, fine. Now, I didn't know what to expect when this conversation had started about how aggressive the language was going to be. But now we catch a look at it, and I actually think it's a little softer than I expected from Tim. Yeah. It says this. It says, allow app to track your activity across other companies, apps, and websites. Your data will be used to measure advertising efficiency. And then two options, ask app not to track or allow. Mm. That feels somewhat... Soft? I don't know. Your data will be used to measure advertising efficiency. Interesting. Anyway, you can uh, go in there and uh, turn this on or off, by the way. It's in your settings. Scroll down to privacy. There's just a tracking section now. It's completely up to you. Now, it's obvious what Apple's incentive is here to differentiate themselves, to continue to get around this privacy topic, put distance between themselves and Google. Google has a totally different business model. Mm -hmm. Facebook has a different business model. Apple, they sell you the hardware. They can do things like this. I mean, as long as you purchased it from them, they're golden. Mm -hmm. So more control to the user. I don't think it's such such a terrible thing. I'm curious to see about the implications. I know even Zuckerberg himself has sort of backtracked a little bit and said, you know what, we're going to be fine. We got these other plans over here. Mm -hmm. And... So maybe it's just better overall. Maybe it's part of the progression on these devices, us becoming more aware of how they operate. I will just say that some of it is a, is interpretive. Like there are services where you're being tracked and you're getting something for it. And I've mentioned this in the past, like Gmail or um, Google Assistant, where it's like, well, we kind of need to know in order to give you the the the, sure, yeah. the, the best preemptive computing like for example we need to follow you to know where you want to go to reroute you without you even asking for it so that you skip out on the thing on the traffic or the congestion or we're going to remind you you have a flight well where are they going to get that information from they got to plug into it so it's not cut and dry but it should be up to the individual to decide Mm -hmm. whether the benefit justifies the tracking to them given the circumstance and given the app Because there's plenty of apps I would turn this off. I'd be like, you don't need to be tracking me. That app? For sure, yeah. You specifically? So, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, hacker situation, that ransomware? They went after Quanta and they leaked the schematics in a 14, 16-inch MacBook Pro. Mm. Uh, They put the ransom 50 million. Apparently, Quanta said no dice. Then they put Apple on blast, went directly to them and said, okay, you give us the 50. Are they still leaking? They said, we're going to leak some every single day you don't pay us the 50. Oh. But then they only leaked the one thing. Yeah. Did they run out of material? Was a deal struck on the side? They kind of went quiet. And apparently, I mean, according to Mac rumors, that historically they weren't about the bluffing. You ever play poker, Will? I have, yes. You ever, you ever bluff? 
uh, well, I try. <laughs> <laughs> Successfully? You never, uh, you never want, pulled one out? Only once. <laughs> hmm. I would love to be there for that. Yeah. Now, after you bluff, did you show that you bluffed to rub it in or did no, you keep no, it to yourself? No, I have to keep it to myself. Keep it to yourself. Yeah. Okay. That's more your style, isn't it? For sure, yeah. I like that. Anyway, so the group went kind of quiet. I guess you can go either way on this. They were trying to extort Apple. They go quiet could be one of two reasons. One of three reasons. Apple quietly settled with them and said, here's the rules. You don't say a, a word about it. Mm-hmm. We'll give you a few bucks and you stop everything. Okay, I guess that's possible privately. Uh, nothing could have happened. Maybe they didn't have any more information. Apple's like, okay, go ahead. And nothing else came out. So they went quiet. The third one is actually the top comment on this particular article, which is John Wick did his job. So that's another option that oh, okay. some sort of secret operative yeah. took care of business. I think yeah. that one's probably the least likely of the bunch, but it's uh, very entertaining. You know, movie. people like to imagine. Yeah. I didn't watch these John Wick movies. Should they're, I see that? They're great. It's just a lot of action, right? High violence, high action. It's just a, it's just a good time. You just sit back. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, the plot is very cut and dry. It's very easy going. Mm-hmm. You know, you just yeah. follow along. You watch the action. You cheer. Yeah. A lot of cheering. I could do something like that. Yeah. Right, that's possible. Tesla posts record net income, $438 million. Revenue surges by 74%. Uh, what is that? $10.39 billion in revenue. Mm. Uh, this uh, passed, surpassed their expectation. So it's not only a record, but it's more than what they had expected. So yeah, but uh, 93 cents per share versus 79 cents per share expected. 10.39 billion versus the 10.29 billion expected, up from 74 percent a year ago. Uh, one thing I want to mention here, I talked about, I think, on a previous episode, was about those regulatory credits. Hmm. That they would sell them off to other manufacturers. Yeah, let me just let me just show you something over here. Uh, the company recorded five hundred and eighteen million in revenue from sales of regulatory credits during the period. Wow. But the profits are four hundred thirty-eight million. And I'm wondering how the accounting works on the sale of those regulatory credits wouldn't you think okay on paper it sounds like pure profit you got the credit you sell the credit Mm -hmm. what was the cost but is there a way within accounting to apply some type of cost to that where the the entire margin is not realized or you could be like well what investments did we have to make in order to accrue the credit in the first place i don't know i'm not an accountant this is not financial advice it's not investment crypto buy doge don't not financial advice. Anyway, I thought that was curious how they broke it down that way. That is a boatload of money. And as we mentioned the last time we covered it, it's one of those things that a lot of people don't, may not recognize immediately is how substantial a part of their business this uh, these regulatory credits are. Because I presume that the profit margin lives there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, because you're talking about Ten point three nine billion in revenue to generate four hundred and thirty eight million in profit. You see, profit is hard will in the car business. Hmm. Profit's the hard part. So if you can if you can throw in an extra half a billion selling regulatory credits, which is a far easier, more straightforward business, you might do something like that. But I don't. Again, I'm not. In, I'm not in the automotive uh, game myself. I don't have any cars yet. I don't sell cars. I mean, have cars. I don't. Yeah. I don't have an electric car company yet. We're still working on that. <laughs> so maybe there's more to the story here. Well, they're selling uh, Bitcoin as well, seems like. Yeah. To make like a, a hundred million profit. Anyway, recently. point being here. Tesla's making money. Profit is sure. good. <laughs> profit is good. Losses are bad. Yeah. Revenue good. More revenue better. And they're delivering cars, 184,800 Model 3 and Model Y cars, beating Mm -hmm. expectations and setting a record for Tesla. So no matter what they're doing to make it all work, as far as the books are concerned, how and where they're collecting uh, revenue and profits, 
They are moving cars. Teslas are on the street. I promise you that. Mm -hmm. And that's big for still a relatively new automaker. Speaking of new automakers, let me show you an upcoming Chinese EV, the Zhiji L7 with a 621 mile range and wireless charging. And first off, before you click on anything, two questions for you. What do you think about the design of the front end? Does it remind you of anything? Do you like it? Uh, it's cool. It has like a really edgy, sharp looking uh, front end. Mm -hmm. It's nice. So it, for me, is quite reminiscent of a Lexus vehicle. I think it's the sure, LFA. Yeah. Okay. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Pull it up real quick. Only if you don't mind. Is it the LFA I'm looking for? Or is it something else? Mm, not the LFA. It's it's what is the one? Uh, you're just gonna do Lexus. Wow, good luck to you. It's the high performance model LC, LC something. Try that. There you go. The front end. Look at the front end on the black one there. Oh yeah. Or even the one where you can see more of the front end. Yeah, there. It has this like these triangles or or, or uh arrows going in see yeah. that yeah see what i'm talking about yeah see? I, I i see it do you actually or are you uh, patronizing me right now <laughs> no no i do yeah i mean i'm i don't care by the way i'm not the guy that's like the the police on this thing probably many cars over the years have had arrows coming in, but it gives it a look of speed uh question number two the presenter here what do you think about his fit uh well he's a guy Go ahead. Uh, is he the CEO? No, I think he's kind of like a presenter. Like he's a YouTuber he's a type of thing. Uh, sure, why not? Yeah. It's different. He's not wearing a suit or anything. Uh, like urban wear. Is it too much? Is it, is it a lot of clothing? Are you hot looking at it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a layers. It's like a long sleeve. It is, yeah. With a, a hoodie layer and a jacket. Which I'm getting hot, and it's also the jo boots. it's also they're Jordans, uh -huh. they're Jordans, and you know Jordan is a it's a substantial shoe. It's a high top. It's a thick pant. Yeah. So, well, yeah. he's doing his thing. I'm sure he is. Yeah. Anyway, so this vehicle, 621 mile range, is noteworthy on its own. Uh, one of the backers for this company is Alibaba Group, by the way. Full electric sports sedan. Decent range, state of the art interior, and uh, and the wireless charging, which is the thing I want to see. Oh. Wireless charging would be great. You know, I've been plugging this car in now, and I realize it's not going to be as efficient or fast, but I would love to imagine a day in which you just roll over top. Is that what this car does? I don't think this one rolls over top. I think it's like one of those ones from the nose. Oh, okay. That you install. Uh, at first, the vehicle will be offered with a 93 kilowatt hour battery pack that will give it 615 kilometers of range, but a larger 118 kilowatt pack offered in the future, which will boost the range to the 621 miles or 1,000 kilometers. Hmm. I mean, everybody wants that. 1,000 kilometer range seems yeah. to be the target. We just had the EQS in here, and I was telling you, I mean, range was a big story for them, 700 mm -hmm. around there. Oh, also, this vehicle has the uh, no side mirrors, got the cameras. On the side, quite oh, sleek. I guess that's a camera too. The oh, there's cameras thing. on here, Will. That's a 180 degree camera up there. So anyway, yeah, you can go take a peek at it if you want, but like they are rapidly, the EV market is rapidly expanding, period. Uh, does it say price here? No, no, no. I think we're too early. Okay. Maybe, I mean, price is somewhere, but it's not on here. Mm. It's also going to be pretty quick, by the way. Zero to 60 and 3.9. We're not talking about crazy, stupid numbers, but that's not bad. Yeah. Honda has teased their new interior design philosophy. I don't know if you're going to be a fan of this. Well, you know anything okay. about Honda? You ever had Honda? Uh, No. Oh. I've drove a couple Civics before. Okay. But no, I never owned one. Popular ride. It is, yes. Uh, Are this you a is, fan? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, maybe not the most recent like stuff, but certainly 
when I was in high school, it was about Hondas, man. Yeah. It was about Hondas. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I even to now, it's, a, it's such a reliable utilitarian thing. But one thing happened along the way. It got a, it got a lot flashier, particularly the interior. Oh, yeah. A lot more buttons and knobs and things like this. Like, go ahead and look at an old Honda. Just be like, Honda 1992. Give me a 1992. Like, look how simple that thing is. Sure, yeah. That red one? Yeah, look at that thing. Yeah. That's a classic. I actually drove one like that around for a while. Mm. With the hatchback. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, I drove one. Like Does that. it stick? No. Oh. It's automatic. But... It was a, it's actually not a bad place to sit. It's quite a bit of glass. Sure. It's yeah. easy to maneuver. Yeah. It was a, I mean, everybody knows it. anyone who's watching this, who's of a certain age knows this car. Yeah. It's a very iconic, uh, front. Anyway, they were about this real simple thing. Now people went in and modded it like crazy, but look at how simple that form is right there. Look, click on the right. Look how simple that form is. Yeah. Look at the size of the back windows. Mm -hmm. it's actually not a bad looking thing it's, it's actually not if 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 you let me change the rim a little bit i'm just you know i'm just saying mm -hmm. anyway decent drag coefficient <laughs> maybe yeah maybe anyway so not just on the exterior but also on the interior their interiors have grown increasingly complex mm -hmm. do a honda civic interior uh 2020 sure yeah a lot of buttons and knobs and things like this and i mean kirk drives a civic yeah kirk, kirk can probably recent. he can probably tell us all about it yeah so he likes it though he likes all the buttons and knobs but apparently they're trying to simplify things they're trying to make it more driver oriented and change go back to the roots so okay. it's gonna have tech technology features but they're gonna try to like minimize the significance of them so it's more out of the way oh yeah and more minimal is that a HUD? Sort of looks like one. I think now this is like a concept image. There's a video to go along with it talking about their ideas. Sim their slogan here is simplicity and something. Did you know, by the way, that Honda was the first company to put out a vehicle with one key? The same key that would be used for the door and the ignition and the trunk. Mm. Prior to that, your car keys would be multiple keys for each door. Really? And the ignition. Oh, huh, I didn't know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, that's really efficient. That's so cool. anyway, they reference the origin here in this video, and they talk about their new slogan. Here's the key portion. And they're just saying we're going back to the roots. Things have gotten overly complicated. We want you to have big glass. We want you to have a simple experience. We want to hang on to certain knobs that make sense. Like they say, we want to keep a volume knob. Mm. And they're not the only ones. Ford kept a knob right on the touchscreen. If you recall the Mach-E. Oh, right, yeah. Right on the glass. So it is funny, this time period we're in where it's like, some companies like, forget it. It's all screen. And then others are saying, no, we're going to need some buttons and knobs, but we're going to try to fine tune the number of them. Right. So, I think that's a good, uh, that's a good look. Compromise. Yeah. You want a couple of buttons, don't you? For sure, yeah, because it's tactile. And what if your screen breaks? Then the whole UI is like done. Willie do. Yeah. Willie do, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice. Willie do, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Pixel 5a camera samples leak. One picture, I believe, leaked. Supposedly from the Pixel 5a. Apparently Google uh, accidentally shared it. That's As a nice shot right there. I part just of a say. part of a blog post. You like this shot? Yeah, it just looks like natural lighting. Can you name the city? Uh, mm. the language here. Vaisho, Vaisho Cinemas. See a Nike ad over there. Somewhere in Asia, I don't know where. Mm. I'm trying to look, see the license plates. Interesting. Probably says right on it somewhere. Yeah. No, it doesn't. I can't see it. Anyway, it's not the important part. This was a part of a blog post, and of course, uh, the the data, the EXIF data, was examined, and the internet detectives were able to determine Pixel Five A, not Five. Hmm. And 
the good part of that, I mean, it's been removed now, by the way, as well, which kind of lends credence to the suggestion that it shouldn't, that it was from an unreleased phone. Good news here is that it looks to be identical to Pixel 5 performance, and people like the Pixel 5. Yeah. You get Pixel 5, you put an A at the end, and you get it for less money. Yeah. That's how the A thing works, Will. Yeah, it's great. It's got my money. Yeah, they were able to recognize that the um, 12 megapixel output was was the same, 12.2 megapixels. Even though the sensor's bigger on this model, it's a 16 megapixels. It produces a 12.2 megapixel shot by default. It shows the same f2.2 aperture as the Pixel 5 as well. So chances are you're going to get Pixel 5 camera performance once this 5A actually comes out. Uh, what about this from Google? No more need to say, hey, Google. Oh. Aren't, aren't you excited by that? It's very unnatural. Hey, Google. I'm, yeah. I'm launching hey, Google for everyone. I'm Hey, Google. Oh, boy. Yeah, you're dead. Um, I apologize, everyone. How do you do one of these stories without saying the actual thing? I mean, what are we dancing around here? You got to... St- I was already hating myself after I heard myself say it. I'm hearing people saying, why'd you say it? Hey, Google! Why don't I say it again? So they're going to get rid of it or at least get rid of it for short commands or at least they're experimenting with getting rid of it for short commands. Huh. And I think this is really cool. Google Assistant update codename Guacamole aims to let you perform tasks without a wake phrase. Let me give you a couple examples, Will. What if your phone is already ringing, but your hand's free? Wouldn't you love to just say, pick up? Yeah. As opposed to... That's the obvious. Hey, place. Google, pick up? Uh-huh. No, it's good. There are certain circumstances in which it is pretty obvious mm. what the instruction is, and therefore the extra piece could... Could be unnecessary. They call them quick tasks. Uh, it could be time sensitive things like answering a phone call or snoozing an alarm. Just you just shout snooze. Mm. I mean now now the, it's the movie that you always want me to watch. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's just like that. It's just language. Just snooze. Yeah. Or in the movie, does he have to say, "Hey Google"? No, no. They have full-on conversations. It's a whole thing. Who does? The the AI. Right. Yeah. Do they fall in love with each other? Is that what happens? I'm not going to spoil it. You got to watch it. Well, you just did. I just did, and I didn't even watch it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what else is in here? Uh, phone call snoozing through through an alarm. It's probably for the best that such shortcuts are limited like this. You wouldn't want Google Assistant to pipe up every time you ask a question with an earshot. So I'm sure they'll fine-tune this for the circumstances that make sense. I I mean, anything else, like if you're running a timer. A timer is the most efficient, I guess. Start timer, stop timer. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. All right, we'll have to wait and see. The improved Google Assistant, and if they even go with it, apparently this rolled out to some people's devices. Hmm. Uh, but it's, I suppose, some sort of testing phase right now. We'll see uh, what they eventually end up with. But certainly, it's the future. I think voice. I still think voice has tremendous potential that has not been uh, fully. Well, that's not news, but I just feel like sometimes it gets overlooked. Maybe yeah. it's because Apple and Siri never really took off, but Assistant, when it's working. Man, it's quite a, it's quite a thing to it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, how about this for a phone? If you don't want to get the Pixel Five A, you could get the first. I don't know if it's the first, but you could get a BMW branded phone. Okay, is that what you wa- always wanted? Uh, sure. If I own a BMW, only if you own a BMW. Yeah. Interesting. You can't own a BMW phone without BMW. Come on. You don't think anybody who owns this phone will own it without a BMW? I guarantee they will. Oh, This is from the uh, lesser-known sub-brand of Vivo, IQOO, and it is the IQOO 7 and the 7 Legend, which are both 
offering top-end chipsets at jaw-droppingly low prices. We're talking about Snapdragon 888 hmm. and Snapdragon 870. The 888 is in collaboration with BMW M Motorsports. It features the iconic tricolor racing stripes. Um, the other one is just simply done in black. It's more discreet. You have a huge vapor cooling chamber. Apparently, it is the largest ever on any phone. So I guess it's going to run cool, but you got to deal with a slightly smaller battery to make room for that. 4,000 milliamp hours. Now, what is this price that is supposed to drop my jaw? By the way, also 8 gigs of RAM, 12 gigs. Uh, two different options there. Up to 256 storage. OLED panel is in there with 120 hertz refresh. Okay. It's checking some boxes. And the jaw-dropping price. The Legend starting at 535 and the regular model starting at 428. So a, a, a somewhat flagship spec sheet, 535 bucks, BMW M stripes. Did you uh, did you change your mind, Will? Are you convinced? Uh Yeah, sure I'll get it. All right, sweet. Along with my BMW though. Perfect. All right. That's the easy part. Yeah. Spotify is raising its prices. For a lot of its plans. Ooh. Are you in or out? What are you going to do? Uh, I don't have Spotify. No, you're already out. Yeah. Cool. I'm done. U U.S. subscribers will see a hike to family plans, and U.K. and Europe are getting a hike on a lot of other plans. It's not by a ton of money. Spotify family is going from $14.99 to $15.99. And in the U.K., student pricing goes up from £4.99 to $5.99. Uh, Two-person subscription goes up a dollar as well. Family goes up two bucks in that market. European Union, similar situation. We've got, uh, what is it? Oh, one, one of them, student and duo both go, okay, so there's all a couple of bucks either way. And, you know, look, listen, look, they got 150 million subscribers. That's the word. Mm. That's kind of a number. Yeah. 150 million? It's no joke. Paying? No. Paying or not paying? Paying? 150 million subscribers. More than 150 million subscribers. I mean, a subscriber is paying, right? 345 million totally month, total monthly active users, 150 million subscribers. Mm. At that amount of money? The average revenue per user is around five dollars and thirteen cents. Hmm. Five dollars per user, hundred fifty million users. I don't need to tell you. Well, a few dollars at play. Hmm. Anyway, they went out and spent all that money. They went and got the likes of Rogan and who else they get? I don't know. They got the sports. Uh, uh, Bill Simmons, he got, did they get Oprah or something, or Kim Kardashian, and uh, Michelle Obama, I, why I can't, it's a, they got a lot of people. Sure. And and they spent hundreds of millions of dollars. And you know how you pay that off, Willie do? Subs. Just up the fee, a dollar. Yeah. One dollar across 150 million subscribers. You know what that is? It's 150 million dollars. There you go. <laughs> Simple maths. <laughs> Isn't that a great business? You just one dollar. We need a we need 150 million. Well, you got you got 150 million users. One dollar should increase it. Yeah. Why not? Perfect. That's the beauty of having such a huge subscriber base. Now, obviously, it could backfire. People could bail. Yeah. Apparently, there's going to be a little leeway. They're going to get some time to decide. But yeah. Spotify goes up in price. Did you see this clip of the Perseverance rover, um, the little helicopter in Ingenuity? Mm -hmm. You saw this one? This is the I third didn't see flight. This one, no. Okay. So go ahead and, and click play. You see it over there in the bottom left corner. Yep. It's a tiny little, tiny little helicopter. And there it goes. There it is. <laughs> goes up, goes to the side, and is all being captured by the Mastcam Z 
on the rover. This has been trending for a little while. I just felt felt the need to remind people that's Mars. Oh yeah, it's a little video clip from Mars, uh -huh. and it always kind of screws me up when I see it there in trending next to God knows what else is trending. It's like, yeah. oh, there's a clip from Mars, transmitted back. Mm -hmm. from a sandy a robot. clay landscape, whatever that is. Yeah, the robot sent oh, it back. It's coming back. Yeah, and the robot is shooting YouTube clips of its own little helicopter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Soon enough, they'll have their own TikTok. I guess it's not, I don't know, you'd call it a robot. It's a rover. I don't know, whatever. Doing anyway. Pranks on Mars. Whatever, but I think sometimes you got to get reminded with this stuff, like, you get so caught up, you know, I made the mistake of reading a bunch of stuff on Twitter earlier today. I was getting all, it, I was getting sideways with it. You know, everybody's so angry. Like, holy cow, man. It's just, yeah. just, it just, it's just, it starts to make you go, like, you can't, you absorb some of it. You, you, yeah. you dive in with the best intention. You're like, oh, there's going to be some banter going on. And it's, but no, it, it, it escalates. And I'm not talking about my own subject matter. I'm talking about just the general conversation. If you touch the trending page, if you just think you're going to do a little reading. Oh, no, man. Increasingly, it's like, I don't want to go sideways today. I might just not click. And, and you know, this is uh, unfortunate that we can't have just a slightly more uh, casual discourse. Like, we can't just. Well, we were talking about the medium. Of Twitter, yeah, it's, yeah. The conversations it's just, that people have there, even if it is, are they conversations? Or are they uh, just statements? I, if people could just like some basic stuff, you just have each other's best interest in mind. You just look at another person as another human. You just look at each other as other human. You're human. I'm human. We look. We all screw there's, screw there's it no up. Looking at Twitter. We all, looking. we screw it up. Like, I mean, yeah. everybody has had a short temper. Everybody has said something mean and everything else. But, uh, like, long term, you view other people in the best light instead of the worst light. And then people eventually do the same for you. And then it just kind of builds on itself. And it's like, oh, I, they gave me the benefit. I give them the benefit. They give me the benefit. And back and forth. And I realize every situation is different. But it's, man, if I make a mistake, click on the replies on any topic, it's, it's, it's amazing to me how well combat works. And it continues to work. Even when everybody's feeling like crap partaking in the thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I don't want to, I'm not... I don't like to complain, so I'm not trying to turn it into that. People are free to, you know, b be a person, however, whatever that means to you. But I just, sometimes I notice it sends me sideways to just even peripherally partake in the way that human beings are choosing and selecting to engage with one another. Yeah. Maybe is you know, maybe part of it is being a dad as well and just seeing how, uh, destructive it can be to interact with people in that way if, whether it's like siblings or how hard it would be to coexist to have a healthy life if you were constantly accelerating all the way to the combat and instead of yeah anybody in a circumstance giving each other the benefit yeah it's actually when you give the person the benefit that you create an opportunity for them to learn and grow, you create an opportunity for them to actually take a different path out of it instead of putting up their guard like I got to protect myself because they're coming for the jugular. Mm -hmm. It's actually that vulnerability on both sides, like feeling comfortable enough to to not necessarily need to be right all the time. To not necessarily need to enforce all the time. But instead to say, you know what? You're welcome here. We, yeah. You know what? We might not see eye to eye and everything, but you're welcome here. Maybe you have something to, to say. Maybe I have something to say. Maybe there's something in the middle. You ever mm -hmm. partake in a negotiation, man? You got to give a little to get a little. Mm-hmm. 
You can't expect something for nothing. Yeah. And then, and, then, and then the whole time I went sideways and then I saw this clip of this little helicopter and I felt good to know that no matter whatever little bickering is going on, that's Mars. And the universe is vast. Yeah, this little robot doesn't have to hear about Twitter. They don't have to hear about the... There's more to the story. Terrible conversations. There's more to the story. He's flying around. There's a... Uh, the unknown is still out there, and it's not all about any two people's back and forth because it's bigger than all that. Yes. And I like these reminders every so often. It's bigger than all that. Oh, yeah. uh, This next one takes it in a different direction. I heard you laughing when I was watching this clip. Yeah. Over uh, the weekend, it was like a big deal. The Josh fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you? So you 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 looked into this? Yes, it was trending on Twitter uh, over the weekend. Okay, okay. And it was funny. It's a funny. No, it's thing. it's it is absolutely funny and bizarre and interesting. It is a fight, not a real fight, by the way. This is a play fight. But I'm sure someone will spin it to be. No, 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 no. It wasn't. I watched a clip. It wasn't. It it actually started paper rock scissors is what the original one was. Yeah. What it is, it's called a Josh fight because it's anybody with the name Josh. It actually started. The guys, the guy found someone with his exact name first and last. Yes. Josh. I can't remember what his last name was Start, now. Starts with the S. Uh, anyway, so this guy finds someone else on social media. Josh Wayne Swain. Swain. Josh him. Swain. There we go. He's wearing a shirt that says Josh Swain. He found another Josh Swain. He did paper, rock, scissors with him. Yeah. Winner gets to keep the name. Yeah. Because there can only be one Josh Swain. But then this blows up to the point of everybody by the name of Josh agreeing to partake. There can I, only be one. But I obviously, I don't know if anyone's being forced to change their name. They put a good cause on it with the donations to the food bank as well. And uh, in the end, some little kid by the name of Josh yeah. became the ultimate Josh. And Josh's from all over the United States showed up to the Josh fight uh -huh. in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. And that's all it was. It was a wholesome Josh fest. Yeah. People were wearing costumes. <laughs> Spider-Man Josh. Uh, Jedi Josh. It's crazy, Lord man. Lord of the Rings. It's crazy. Yeah. Look at that. It's a fun time. See, that is an example of all of, of these people giving each other the benefit of the doubt. They don't take it too far. They get hit. They fall down. The kid ends up winning. Yeah. He gets the Josh trophy. Now, I don't know the whole story. Obviously, maybe there's somebody upset in there, but uh, on the surface, it looks like it went down. Yeah. It went down just fine. Anyway, they did it outside, so... And they got vaccines over yeah. there and whatever. Shout out Josh's. Shout out to anybody by the name of Josh. Yeah. This next one, I don't know if you have a take or not. I am I don't remember this being a thing, but Pepsi Blue is making a comeback. It was a thing that existed in 2002. Do you think you ever encountered a Pepsi Blue when you were, I don't know, what, like 15 years old or 16 years old or something? No. Was it in Canada? I don't know. So, never heard of it. I never heard of it, never saw Of course, everybody remembers the crystal, the clear one. Yeah, the clear one, yeah. The clear one was a big moment, but not, but definitely a moment. Didn't last very long. I kind of wish I had one of those. Yeah. Crystal ones, like sealed up. Mm. Kind of cool collector's item. Yeah. I don't think it was a commercial success, obviously. I don't know if blue was or not. Now, this doesn't taste just like Pepsi. In fact, it has a berry flavor to it. So I guess it's because it has the Pepsi name, it must be some form of cola and some form of berry. So think like maybe cherry cola, but sub the cherry for berry. You get yourself a berry cola. Oh. And in this case, it's blue, which is... A bit different. Anyway, they're bringing it back. They it, it lasted two years originally. It went from 2002 to 2004. Two decades later, here we are again. 
coming out May 3rd across the nation and designated retailers. That is the U.S. we're talking about. Uh, the last new product from Pepsi was a collaboration with Peeps, which mm. was the limited edition marshmallow cola, which I never got to try. Yeah. Uh, that was a very limited collaboration. Maybe Pepsi Blue. I'll take mm-hmm. a sip on the show. I don't know. This next one is unbelievable. It is so wild. It's got all the pieces. Future, science, Florida, mosquitoes. <laughs> It Definitely is, Florida. It is an absolutely comprehensive read, and I recommend if any of you guys find this interesting to head over to Futurism and actually go through it because I'm only going to be able to scratch the surface in this clip. A biotech company is releasing 500 million gene-hacked mosquitoes in Florida, and some residents are not super happy about it. Hmm. This is a tiny little area in the Florida Keys called Isla Morada, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's these tiny little islands. They got real problems with mosquitoes. <laughs> mosquitoes, as many people know, they trans- transfer uh, a lot of disease, right? M- malaria and West Nile. And I think mosquitoes kill more people every year than any other creature. Mm-hmm. M- most of it outside the U.S., obviously, but they're a problem in a lot of places and people have been trying to figure out what to do about it because you know, they're part of the ecosystem, but they're thriving over there. And this company, this, uh, what, what are they? Gene hacking biotech company figured that they were going to do a mosquito. The company's called Oxitec, by the way, they were going to release a half billion gene hacked mosquitoes that would be engineered to kill off the other mosquitoes. These would be male mosquitoes which don't bite, which would then breed with female mosquitoes that do bite. And then that offspring would not be viable. The offspring would carry this genetic alteration, which would mean that the next generation couldn't breed. You understand oh. where you, does, it, does that make any sense? Uh, no. Can you say that again? <laughs> okay. We're going to say it again. Oxitec, we're going to say it again. Okay. After a years long process, the EPA approved Oxitec's plan in May 2020 through an experimental use permit. They inserted a gene called OX5034. Oxitec says that the mosquitoes, all males, which don't bite humans, will breed with wild females, which do bite. They'll pass on the OX5034 gene, a hereditary payload that prevents any female offspring from reaching adulthood. Those are the ones that do bite. Oh, so they're breeding mosquitoes not to bite humans. They're breeding mosquito. Fe- they're breeding female mosquitoes that will not reach adulthood, so they won't be. They won't ever get to the point of being capable of biting. I see. Well, they would die off. Uh-huh. Any female carrying that gene would die off. The theory is that the more gene hacked mosquitoes and their descendants that reproduce, the fewer biting female mosquitoes would be in the area. Hmm. Now, the reason the incentive here is that you got the the diseases that are born of mosquito transmission, dengue, Zika, and it's a, it's a relatively small percentage of the overall mosquito population that transmits these things, apparently. Mm-hmm. They're going to target the mosquito species Aedes aegypti. They make up 2 to 4% of the mosquito population in the Florida Keys, but they're associated with nearly all cases of mosquito-borne illnesses. So they're going after a very specific group. Now, in order to achieve this, they went around to local residents and they said, we got to sign this document We're with the mosquito control, but they're actually this private company, obviously, but they say, you know, here's the document. Do you want to let us do this? And then a lot of people say mosquito control sounds great. Let me sign off on this. And now people looking more deeply into it. It's like, I don't know if I want to be a part of this experiment well, that people are concerned about hybrids. People right. are concerned about are you sure you're not going to be viable? I mean, it's a Jurassic Park moment. Yeah. yeah. What's going to go on with these m- mosquitoes? Are you going to get like a some super version? Now, they say, no, it's a small experiment. Don't worry. If that happens, if we, say, if we catch 
collect a hybrid that's carrying a gene will cut the whole thing off. Hmm. But they're having a big conversation, big discussion about it, what they should and shouldn't do. And it's complex. Yeah. Because you have the risk factor involved. It's like so many situations in human life 2021. You have the risk factor involved with leaving things the way they are. And then you have the risk factor involved with highly modifying the scenario. Yeah. Genetically, mm-hmm. in this case. So it's a couple of different points of views. But it, like I said, it's far more comprehensive than what I could get into. The article goes into great depth over the potential dangers of such a thing and the potential upside of such a thing. So check out Futurism for the whole thing. But uh, yeah. Would you sign up for something gene, like this? Gene hack mosquitoes. Well, here's the other thing about it. If I'm one of the residents that's like, no, you can't place that that device on my property, mm-hmm. well, my neighbor could say yes. Yeah. So like a mosquito doesn't see your property line. So it really does matter what the community thinks. And maybe sure. that's the way the thing has to be, go about is like some sort of community vote or something as opposed to going to each individual resident. Uh, but it's, yeah, it is a real, it's a tough call, it, right? it is a real problem. Yeah. The mosquito stuff. I don't know about you. I mean, how you feel about mosquitoes? I'm surprised people are standing up for mosquitoes, but I guess there's the... Uh, well, they definitely have to be in the ecosystem, right? Because I think a lot of... Uh, oh, yeah. No, no. It's, it's, it's the type of thing you go in, you mod eat. one little thing, and then all of a sudden... Actually, I'm going to get to that in a moment. I got another article that goes the same way. It's actually the nature show today. You didn't expect that you came in here. Okay. Go Next, on. beavers shut down the internet for 36 hours in a small Canadian town. In the most Canadian story of the day. Is that the beaver? He looks very smug. <laughs> That's the beaver. And uh, I think him and Otis might be friends. They got a similar look to them. Yeah. They got a similar hairstyle. Very mischievous. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a very small town story. Apparently, they chew through inches, 4.5 inch thick protective tube to get down to the cable. They cut the internet to 900 people in Tumblr Ridge, Canada. While they were searching for materials to build their dam. You know, they take that uh, dam building yeah. real serious, man. Mm-hmm. Real serious job. And so they'll take whatever feels like it's going to be robust, including man-made materials. Sure, yeah. Including your little internet cable right there. Uh-huh. So you just be lucky you don't have these guys around your internet cable. They'll be taking it for their dam. Yeah. Um. So they, they had how many people? I guess it was... So 900 people had no internet and a few others had no telephone for around 36 hours. They were uh, fiber cables up there. This is a town in northeastern British Columbia, small town population of 2,000. Oh. And the cable was actually underground. They chewed through it at multiple points. Uh, and that was around 4 a.m. that the outage started. So they were, they were, I guess they were working at night, those beavers. Yeah, beavers are very hardworking. Wow. Like- listen to a podcast about them they're very uh beneficial to the ecosystem nice yeah i never had a problem with a beaver myself yeah they're friendly to the for the most part yeah so anyway this was a telus line that was out by the way um obviously i would hate to be without internet but if they said to me on the phone or if like i got in touch with them or like later on they're like oh that outage yeah, it was the beaver was responsible. I kind of be like, you <laughs> little guy. I'd be a little less angry. Sure, yeah. If it was just the beaver that did it. <laughs> All right, sticking with nature, it's the nature update. York Region closes road nightly to allow endangered salamanders to cross safely. Hmm. <laughs> huh. Talk about this I- for... Uh, environmental modification they're shutting down and this is which road local to you yeah so uh they're shutting down portions of stoville road in richmond hill oh to allow the salamanders to cross safely it's a yearly migration of the jefferson salamander to uh, get to their breeding ponds it's an endangered species apparently oh and they like to go at night when uh, when the pavement is damp and, you know, look at how soft that that guy is. If you're just driving through, they're all getting squashed. Yeah. So I'll probably some people have been inconvenienced by this. But every single night, they're shutting down this section of road where they cross over. And it's just one specific area. Yes. The oh. region reports that the road closures have allowed over 150 salamanders to cross safely and get on with their business of breeding. That's one of the salamanders. Just waddling through the cement. 
Yeah, they did a lot of uh, studies on this. They're these these they're endangered. Oh, okay. Well, so they're you know they're trying to let them migrate and I don't know. It's a little. Uh, we had two two Canadian nature stories, one after the other, back yeah. to back, from the beavers to the salamanders. Shout out Canada nature. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out also to Scotland nature. They apparently are going to be one of the world's first rewilding nations. And that is exactly what it sounds like, an effort to bring wildlife back, wildlife that's been lost. Now, you may have heard of this in the past when you bring a certain species back to a region that it has left previously, either due to hunting or other environmental circumstances. They want to get the wildlife back. Mm -hmm. Over the past 50 years, two-thirds of the world's wildlife has been lost. 40% of the plant species are threatened to extinction. Yeah, humans, we keep... Uh, doing stuff. Yeah. So there's all kinds of conservation efforts that have existed, but this one's a bit more controversial where you actually would bring in like a predator or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the example that you may have heard of in the past was in Yosemite National Park. They brought the wolves back and they had to come up to Jasper National Park, grab a few wolves. They grabbed 14 wolves. They oh. brought them down there and the caribou were doing so well because all the wolves were gone yeah. that these new wolves showed up 14 and they said, oh, we'll take care of that right there. It's lunchtime. And not only did they have lunchtime, they had more babies because of it. Now you got uh, wolves. You see, lunchtime leads yeah. to more wolves because everybody's like, well, we're healthy. This is good. Let's uh, move on to the next phase here. Yeah. So famously, the wolf came back over there. Now the... The predator that they're talking about here in Scotland, the Eurasian lynx. Hmm. And they're making a push to rewild by introduction of uh, not just the Eurasian lynx, but actually some other species as well. And some other, some other aspects of, of uh, rewilding. Commit to rewilding 30% of public land. Establish a community fund to support rewilding in towns and cities. Backing the reintegration of keystone species such as rehoming beavers. How about beavers twice in a show? Never happened nice. before. And reintroducing the Eurasian lynx where there is local support. Now, this is where it gets a bit sketchy because you got houses and, and uh, children and pets nearby in your mm -hmm. neighborhood. And they're like, yeah, we're we'll just going to bring the Eurasian lynx back. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Like, no, Will, we're rewilding. We like the wild. We're... But you need to my... have... My Otis. No, no, no. <laughs> my Otis, ha Otis has no spot, all right, yeah. in the environment. All right, just stay inside, buddy. Yeah. Any, but no, uh, it's controversial. It's, yeah. it, it terrifies some people. But what, what the, the reason it even gets talked about in the first place is because of the consequences of having no predator. So, right. for example, in uh, what national park was I saying? Yosemite. It, was, was it? Or yeah. Jasper. You know what? I think I had the wrong park. I need to. Make sure I'm right on that. Was it Yellowstone? Uh, mm, 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 mm. Yellowstone. My bad. I say Yosemite. There's no wolves over there. I'm glad that I just realized Yosemite. <laughs> Not Yosemite. Yellowstone. Okay. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So in, in this case, you have too many, you have too many caribou or creatures like that. What 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 is it? What is it? What is a caribou? Uh, uh, vegetation, a, a, a vegetarian. <laughs> what, what is the word for that? What do you call an animal that is not a predator? It's not a, a prey. A prey animal. Yeah. A prey animal. Uh, they do too well, and then so they screw up the vegetation because they're overeating. It becomes barren. So the trees don't grow as well. Uh, and then the birds have nowhere to go. It's like it's a crazy yeah. set of consequences because you didn't have just a couple of wolves. Mm -hmm. So they're saying you want to truly rewild, you got to have them all. But the consequences, you might have a lynx in your backyard, Willie Do. Uh, uh, well, I'll take it. You take the lynx? Sure, why not? So Ody's got a fan for himself. Got to figure it well, out. He's got to stay inside. That's it. <laughs> or hold a pocket knife or something. You don't think Otis stands a chance against the Eurasian lynx? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Look at this thing. Yeah, look well, at this. Well, not this one. But look at this. No, that was a baby, look but look at, at the one. size of the mitts. Like Looks the like, uh, claws on there. Dr. Seuss character. Yeah. But very mean. Oh, you're right. Otis doesn't stand a chance against this one right here. 
That's a cool looking cat, though, I gotta say. Oh, yeah. All right, last story of the day. I gotta touch on it. I gotta send some good vibes out to our viewers in India. I just, I was on the trending page, and obviously I've been hearing about it. COVID is on full blast in India. And I don't know, the report here in the BBC was like 370, 348,000 infections, 24 hour period. This was from yesterday. Uh, lack of oxygen, people dying. I saw people, I saw bodies burning in the street. I don't know if you're watching this where you're at in India and how badly your particular region has been hit, but this is obviously affecting a lot of people at the moment. And the world is kind of waking up a little bit. I was hearing about Possibly the United States stepping in and contributing some help, whatever's possible. Uh, obviously, the UK as well. Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, there, look, there's no... Uh, um, it's just... There's no easy way at this point to turn it off, to just hit the off button. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that can be helpful, but... Then you got to get them implemented. Then you got to. It's it, a slow process. It's going to take some time. It's going to be grim before it gets better. I uh, guess for us, we've had firsthand experience of this exploding as well in Canada. Not like this. Not like this, no. This is on another level. And it's hard to even relate to it. You see the figures. They're saying, oh, you got a few hundred thousand per day, but how many are reported? Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of people saying the number might be actually higher. And like, look, I, I realize that the, that the, this show covers a lot of ground and some people would like to watch this show in order to not necessarily have to stare at this stuff, mm -hmm. which is everywhere. Mm -hmm. The only reason I wanted to touch it because a few people asked me about it on Twitter and only because I want to send the positive energy in that direction. That's it. And I, and I, and I want to, uh, I mean, it's not like I'm going to encourage. Uh, it's not like I'm going to encourage some government to send some type of aid or something like that. But for those that are here that listen to this, that are going through that, just to know that there's another side to it, to persevere and to keep fighting. Yeah, thoughts and prayers.